I'm Aya Carroll. And I'm Steve McShane from McShane's Nursery. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll begin in the garden. We'll have tips for a successful garden. Soil basics, tips from top gardeners, and how to cook up some of that garden's bounty. All coming up next. I'm Steve McShane from McShane's Nursery. And I'm Maya Carroll. Welcome to this edition of Begin in the Garden. Man, why do we call it Begin in the Garden? Because so many things begin in the garden. Good nutrition, healthy eating, healthy lifestyle, cooking, begin in the garden. Well, that's what this segment's all about. Getting started, beginning in the garden, the fundamentals and basics to getting started in gardening. Well, soil gives life in the garden, there's no doubt about it. And the diversity of soil here in Monterey County is incredible. Right here, I've got what we call topsoil. <laughs> this topsoil actually came from the marina area, and you can see the amount of sand in it. What I have here are some samples of some various soils from different parts of the county. So now out towards Fort Ord, along the 68 corridor in Monterey, I have a sample of a soil that has quite a bit of the shale and the sandstone in it. It doesn't have a lot of humus. It doesn't have a lot of the good stuff that we want in a good topsoil, the organic matter that really, really generates life. In the case of this soil, it was very clay, very rocky, and I recommended a lot of amendment. A lot of good topsoil like we see here, but more importantly, organic matter in the form of compost or humus. We'll look at some of that material in just a moment. More North Salinas up in Prunedale, I have this sample here. And you can see it's just got more organic matter to it. It's a little bit of a deeper, deeper brown. Uh, boy, and it really holds well. You get a little bit of moisture to it, and it really holds together well. There's more nutritional value in this soil than, say, in the soil that I've shown you from the 68 corridor. This sample here comes from Salinas. This is some of the best soil I've seen in a lot of my sampling. And it's actually in a garden that we're going to visit later on in this segment. You can see some of the organic matter actually present in the soil. Roots, grass, that's the stuff that generates life in soil. Certainly a darker, richer brown, a lot more organic matter in this soil. You see the top 12 to 18 inches of a soil profile are probably the most important parts of what we need in our soil. That's where a lot of the root penetration is taking place, that's where a lot of the growth is taking place. At the end of the day, the darker the soil, the better. And also, the more sand, the better the drainage, the better. Soil that's high in clay, super high in clay, needs to be amended. And there are actually plenty of products out there to manage our soil. Getting our soil in the best shape possible for container gardens or for a vegetable garden is really the first step, kind of what this segment's based on. So let me bring some of the products forward that I'd like to showcase that'll really give you an idea of what you can do to your soil to improve, in, uh, improve its liveliness. Now that Steve has given us some soil basics, it's time to size up your soil. No matter what the problem, Steve has a solution. All right, our adventure continues. So many things that can be done to amend your soil and actually improve its liveliness. The first thing I'll recommend is organic matter. So if you're suffering from soil that's very rocky and doesn't have a lot of organic matter and isn't very rich and that nice brown look to it, then you can add what we call a soil amendment or compost. Many nurseries carry all sorts of soil builders. In the case of this puppy, we have rich organic matter, primarily derived from redwood compost, but also in here is chicken manure. <laughs> Chicken manure adds a great source of nitrogen, doesn't contribute a lot of salts, and boy does it help things grow. But this sort of material will improve drainage, it'll also improve the, uh, the nutrient cycling in the soil. So very, very important amendment. Depending on what you're working with in your garden, there's a lot of other nutrients that can be added as well. 
This here is bone meal. This is derived naturally from the environment and it adds a high concentration of phosphorus, also trace potassium. This will help in the nutrition of soil. This here is alfalfa meal. Alfalfa meal is known to really promote a lot of microorganism growth inside the soil. Microorganisms are real, real important. In just a teaspoon, there's over a billion microorganisms in our soil. And those microorganisms are busy breaking down that organic compost and actually providing it in a form ready for plant uptake. This alfalfa meal is like steroids for microorganisms. They love alfalfa. So by applying this to your soil environment, you're really, really promoting good microbial health. A couple of other things that also are important, blood meal. Blood meal is naturally derived and also contributes a high percentage of nitrogen to the soil. One thing I always tell people is that in soil, one of the most important relationships is the carbon to nitrogen relationship. Carbon comes mainly in the form of organic matter. Nitrogen is present in the air, it's present in the air in the soil, and it's also naturally occurring in the soil. Microorganisms that break down the carbon in this compost also tie up nitrogen. So it's important that when you apply compost to balance the soil environment with an organic source of nitrogen. For all of us that live in the Salinas Valley and suffer from a lot of clay, the number one solution for breaking up clay that's the easiest without totally amending your soil is gypsum. Gypsum works on a microscopic level to break up clay particles. Gypsum is very high in calcium, and calcium as a molecule has got a big plus plus charge to it. It gets into the clay surface and it pushes other nutrients out and pushes the clay particles apart, literally. And boy does it make a difference. You see results almost immediately with water uptake. You see farmers applying this in huge amounts in fields in the Salinas Valley. So gypsum is a great amendment, it's cost effective, and almost immediately it makes nutrients available and it breaks up your clay. The last product that I'll mention in the nutrients is actually seaweed extract. This actually comes from kelp meal. And I'll tell you, it's more and more proven by the University of California that seaweed, and in particular kelp, like alfalfa, contributes to microorganism growth. Boy, does it really help in root penetration, nutrient availability, and just the overall health of your soil. All of these sort of products are natural in how they come about and naturally applied, and they really, really do a lot for building your soil. If you have a question about your garden, why not go to a master, a master gardener? Tom Carwin is with me. He is a master gardener, and thanks very much for being here. I'm glad to be here. People call a hotline that the Master Gardeners Organization provides. Why did that hotline get started? Well, that was uh, the Master Gardener program is generally uh, works to help the Cooperative Extension program of the University of California. The, the cooperative extension specialists uh, work primarily with the agricultural industry and they have a big job. There's a great deal of agriculture going mm -hmm. on in the Monterey Bay area. So they're kept very busy and yet they receive phone calls from home gardeners uh, and aren't able to uh, respond to them well. So they formed the Master Gardeners many years ago. Uh, every county in California has a Master Gardener program. Uh, primarily designed to um, uh, take those questions from home gardeners that the agricultural specialists uh, really can't spend the time on. So the Master Gardeners are a volunteer group trained by the University of California uh, to um, uh, respond to questions that home gardeners have. How do you become a Master Gardener? Well, there is a training program that's uh, done once a year. Uh, it's organized by the volunteers themselves. The class runs for uh, almost every Saturday, most Saturdays, for six months. What is it that you love about the garden? Well, I think because of the diversity of the exercise the, uh, of, of gardening, uh, it has a little bit of everything in it. Certainly, uh, in many respects, it's an art form. Uh, ornamental horticulture uh, can be a, a creative exercise in terms of uh, uh, colors and shapes and 
fragrances and things of that sort. Uh, it's also a good physical exercise just mm -hmm. to keep moving. It's also a scientific aspect to it. Just the, the process of promoting the growth of plants does require an understanding of, of uh, botany and how plants uh, mm -hmm. sur uh, uh, survive and what makes them thrive. If people want to call the hotline or find out more information about what the Master Gardeners have to offer or to participate, what should they do? Well, I can think of three ways right off. Uh, one is the hotline, and uh, the people there uh, will both answer questions uh, on the spot or call you back if they have to study the question. They can also, on the internet, go to uh, MontereyBayMasterGardeners.org. There's a wealth of information about gardening. And then finally, uh, the, garden, the website that we have for special events is uh, smartgardening.org. And that includes the Water Smart Garden Contest, the Smart Gardening Fair, and the uh, Water Smart Garden Tour. Gardening is all about the future. Uh, and that's uh, a good thing because uh, we're always looking to see what's next in the garden. Why not use your garden to entertain? In our Garden to Grill segment, Chef Todd will cook up some tasty treats, the ingredients you can grab from your own garden. Hi, I'm Chef Todd and we're taking you from the garden to the grill. And today we're preparing some grilled vegetable tostadas on a grilled flour tortilla. We're finished with a little crumbled cotija cheese. So we're just using a standard store-bought flour tortilla, and we're gonna we're gonna drizzle those with a little bit of olive oil, and then we're gonna put them on the grill to get them nice and crispy. So by putting just a little extra virgin olive oil on there, and rubbing it on each tortilla, and then setting those right on the grill, we're gonna start them to get nice and crisp, and it's a nice lower fat way to have a a nice crisp tostada shell. Moisturize the skin at the same time. A little bit of olive oil on each side. We want those to go just until they're fairly, you know, golden brown and crispy. They'll bubble, they might bubble on you a little bit. It just it, it gives you the foresight to go ahead and flip them. Just about done. We'll go ahead and pull those off, and you can see how crisp they've gotten. Without, without burning them. And as they cool, they'll crisp up a little bit as well. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of corn ready so that we can grill this corn and have it, we'll shuck it, get it grilled. And we're gonna use it kind of just over the top just to finish our tostada off. We're just gonna set that corn right on the plate. And then again, just a little bit of olive oil drizzled on there, not a lot. And then we'll just kind of roll that around, get that well coated. Then we're gonna, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper so that when we grill, it's already, the flavor's there, it'll stick to the oil now so that it stays on the corn. This is gonna take about 12 minutes all said and done. So you got a little bit of time here, that's why I keep them off the side of the grill, leaving the grill available should you need to work on anything else at the same time. You're gonna do about, about four minutes in each position really and kind of a quarter turn each every other every four minutes just to get them ready you want a nice good char in there Sh corn being high in sugar will char nicely it's got a lot of moisture so we'll actually add some nice beautiful grill marks it's going to get a nice smokiness that will add to our dish and just really enhance the flavor bring out a little more vibrancy of the corn nice and sweet so next what we're going to do is we're going to get the vegetables ready to grill for our tostadas and what we're doing is just taking a little yellow bell pepper and we're just cutting off the edges into four or five and getting that end piece too that we can use to grill we're going to set those on a platter 
because we're going to have to toss those with just a little bit of olive oil to keep them from sticking to the grill. Now we can use other oils. You can use a grapeseed oil or canola oil. I happen to really love the flavor that olive oil imparts. So I generally use good California olive oil. And we've got some scallions that we're going to take. And basically, we're not going to use the, the very end of them. We're going to go ahead and remove that. That can be used later in a salad or as a garnish for some other things. But we don't want that much of it. We're going to use, and then we're just going to kind of take, take those green onions. Like one bunch is enough. Take those green onions and just remove the ends of each of those. Get those off the side. Okay. So now we're going to just take, make sure those green onions are clean, pull off some of this, some of the excess. Um, loose leaf at the bottom. Like most onions, they have layers. And then we're also doing some portobello mushrooms. So if we were to remove the stem, and by taking the stem off, it does expose the gills a little bit, so the gills can tend to get your hands dirty. But we're basically just going to cut those portobellos one time in half and set those off to the side. Okay. You can see our corn's looking good. It's starting to get that nice charcoal on there, nice char on there. So we've also got some, just some large patty pan squash. And we're just going to take the ends off of those on both sides. And then we're just going to cut those into three or four nice big slices. And those two we can, be, can be set aside and ready to be drizzled with a little olive oil to grill for our tostada. And you want those vegetables somewhat well coated with the oil so they don't stick to the grill. But if your grill is nice and clean and it can be brushed with a little oil as well, you shouldn't have a problem with the vegetables sticking. So again, same with the scallions, same with the peppers. Just working them around, getting them well coated. Now one of the processes that you need to go through in getting your grill ready is making sure that you've brushed it well. You should, if you have any hot spots, you want to try to avoid the hot spots. Right here we've got a hot spot right in the center. And usually the way you can tell is if you can't hold your hand over it for more than five seconds, you've got a really hot zone that you want to try to avoid. Because two things, we've got a little oil on these vegetables. And if we go to drop them on the grill and there's a little bit of excess oil that falls off, it's going to flare up on us. It. It's going to cause a lot of burning of the oil, a lot of carcinogens to, to kind of saturate into the food. So we want to try and avoid that. We have this hot spot right in the center. We might be able to turn it down a little bit, but we're just going to try to avoid that. We're going to work the edge of the grill primarily. Give our corn just one more little t turn to keep that charring. So I'm going to start with the m mushrooms which, and the squash, which tend to take the longest amount of time to grill. So we're just going to take those mushrooms and set them right on the back side of the grill. And I like to do the gill side down first. Okay, and then now the same with the squash. And again, if you, as you're getting ready to put them on there, if you don't think it's evenly coated enough in oil, you can always give it one more little toss. And set those right onto the grill. Once those have gotten four minutes or so on, they take about eight minutes in total. We'll go ahead and start with our bell peppers and our scallions. So with the scallions, I like to just put those right on. Go ahead and get this corn out of the way, it's just about done. Right, so we're going to go ahead and put more of those peppers on there. And again, those have been tossed with the olive oil, salt and pepper, like all of our vegetables on here. Once we've got those on, we're just going to give those also about, about another four minutes in total. So we're just going to go ahead and turn those scallions one time. They don't take a lot of, lot of heat on those, but you can see how beautiful dark green.